So let's let's just review where we are um, in terms of the antiretrovirals available for treatment and treatment options. In the developed world, they're pretty darn good, mm -hmm. um, and I, I I I think we at the same time tend to become a little bit complacent with mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. We're to a point now where first line therapy is one pill once a day. If you can tolerate a non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor like um, efavirenz, that all of these drugs have their challenges. Um, we have good second line. We have um, better um, agents in the pipeline. However, they are all of the same general mechanism. These are suppressive agents. Um, where Marty and I have spent a fair amount of time for the last two years is discussing how we're going to cure HIV. What are the challenges we face? What are the reservoirs? What do we need to do? And as, as working with Dr. Fauci as the head of the research organization that really, it's our job to innovate, to move forward. Um, Marty was instrumental in helping us think about how we could really focus on a cure and focus on eliminating HIV, because that's really the next goal. You completely can suppress somebody with, with virus. However, if they stop taking their pills, the virus comes back. We need to be able to get to a point where we can eliminate the virus uh, from the human body. Mm -hmm. That plus using antiretrovirals as, as prevention are very important questions, research questions we need mm -hmm. to tackle. If we move mm -hmm. outside of the developed world, the biggest f challenge we face is delivery. Um, mm -hmm. There are easily, um, just to meet the guidelines of say a cutoff of 200, which is WHO's cutoff, we are not reaching um, even 50% uh, of the people that need antivirals. Mm -hmm. So if we can combine preventing new people from getting infected with effective treatments and rollout of, of treatment for people who are already infected, um, plus work toward a cure, we can mm -hmm. definitely over the next 10 to 15 years get this epidemic not, under, not only under control mm -hmm. so it's no longer growing, mm -hmm. but start curtailing the number of infected people. Mm -hmm. The goal should be eradication first mm -hmm. from the human body and then from the human population. Mm -hmm. and, and Tony Fauci along with others including yourself that has just said that we know how to stop the, the, the increase of this epidemic. Do we have the, 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 the punch? Can we make it happen? How do we make get the political will and the, the, the capital to make that happen? Well I think what we need is the evidence that we we think we have we have the hypothesis. We mm -hmm. have the ideas. Mm -hmm of how to go about tackling this question of can we use antivirals as prevention um, and that's not only treatment of infected people but using antivirals um, as, as, as prophylaxis. Can we, can we combine these in a unique and creative way so that we maximize this punch as you're saying mm -hmm. to a point where we can really get this epidemic under control. If we can demonstrate that through, through clinical trials, through demonstration projects, through, I mean, for example, could you take a, a major American city with a profound epidemic and go in and do some demonstration projects, some randomized trials to figure out how best to identify the highest risk people, to identify all of those people who are HIV infected. At the same time, how do you get people who have been resistant to testing to actually um, have an uptake of voluntary testing and counseling? And then once you identify an infected population, how do you ensure that they get in care and mm -hmm. stay in care? And then there are other services are need are, are met. Uh, there, there are addiction services, the, the other mm -hmm. challenges that, that this population faces. That is the research package we need to work on. Mm -hmm. It's no longer just the biomedical community. We have to link mm -hmm. with the mental health community. Right. At some level we have to work with the jails, we have to work with the housing um, folks. We have to really have a tight relationship with CDC in order to tackle all of these, this myriad of problems. It is, it is um, a challenge, it is an exciting time, it's mm -hmm. something we're all looking forward to working on. Right. And I think we have, um, we have the research agenda, we have um, the talent. I mean, the other, you know, so one of the other strengths of, of Marty was he, I, he knew people and he knew how to bring talent along. I mean, mm -hmm. Brenda's a perfect example, mm -hmm. it's a, a wonderful person, mm -hmm. came into Project Inform, um, and really has built um, a portfolio and a, a set of approaches and a set of colleagues that she goes mm -hmm. to to help continue to advance um, the leadership in Project Inform. The new leadership who has taken over in Project Inform is doing a fabulous job in terms of staying integrated with the research community and continuing to hold these essential uh, conferences on their own turf uh, so that research can continue 
to have this very important dialogue mm -hmm. with the activist community. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for continued, um, so I, pr support is not the right word, but mm -hmm. continued, and it's not pressure, it's, it, is a, it is a collaborative energy that comes from it's groups like this. It's an enthusiasm yeah. that say, hey, don't forget about this mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. And if you start slipping off the track, mm -hmm. hey, get back on track. And, and it really is, um, is the, the, the tension, and I mean that in the it's almost theatrical sense, mm -hmm. the tension uh, is, a, is an important um, uh, and good thing in, in this kind of an environment. We just have coming out today are the results of the interleukin-2 trials. Mm -hmm. now, those are experiments that give us a negative result, but they give us a very definitive answer. Mm -hmm. Marty was important, played an important role in getting those trials mm -hmm. um, established and funded and um, and launched. Mm -hmm. um, so you know that's a, you know they they delivered on immune reconstitution time after time. They the, we established the hypotheses, tested. Um, the, the agent that was available, and unfortunately it didn't give us the answer we all would have liked, mm -hmm. but it gave us a, a, a very strong, mm -hmm. firm answer. Mm -hmm. uh, how excited are you about the, the fact that AIDS has done so much for other diseases and, and the potential for it in the future to be kind of a, a leader in, in application and also in knowledge base and science? It's, it's, isn't that that's something that's That's a great that's question, huge, and that is, that is you know, um, the AIDS field has been criticized uh, for being siloed or stovepiped. Yeah, yeah. And I, think, I don't think that's fair because I think what we have done is built capacity, particularly um, in the developing world. And as we readily acknowledge the challenges of dealing with the co-infections of, of TB and HIV and, and malaria and HIV, um, mm -hmm. our, our research organizations are tackling those questions and they're bringing um, the, the best in TB to combine it with the best in HIV mm -hmm. so that we have improved diagnostics. We have, we can sort through this challenge and the myriad of drug-drug interactions that we face with tuberculosis um, in creative and constructive ways so that both diseases are treated more effectively. Mm -hmm. And all of this, of course, spills into uh, the area of what we would call the mono-infected uh, mm -hmm. TB patient. With nearly a third of the world's population uh, challenged with TB, this is a must. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about the young investigators coming along? Like there are and, some yeah. outstanding young investigators who mm -hmm. are coming up. I think the challenge with young investigators in this environment is it's more than just um, the challenges of the research. I mean, considering mm -hmm. the global economy right now, it would it is really hard to land a faculty position, to get a lab built, to get established. Mm -hmm. We, um, as a society, really need to work toward that end to get those um, those places built. So universities need uh, to continue to, to be thoughtful about where the challenges um, in science and public health are so we can build, uh, continue to build the next cadre of investigators. Mm -hmm. uh, the previous director at NIH, uh, Dr. Ali Serhoni, was committed to support for um, young and new investigators and that legacy will continue mm -hmm. uh, and we can continue to build the platform uh, for the next generation. At the same time, with many of the older folks with their retirement uh, being wiped mm -hmm. out through um, the, the decline in the stock market, they're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So we do need to continue to draw on the talent mm -hmm. uh, that is existing and continue to get uh, investigators from other fields into mm -hmm. the field of HIV research. I appreciate so much your, your candor and your offering and, and your discussion with Marty about Marty and, uh, and what he brought to the, uh, to the fight for so many years being the first one in and, and now passing is going to be such a great loss for all of us. Mm -hmm. But we'll, we'll manage to get through and, and in, his, in his respect, uh, do better if we can. Yes. All of us do better. And I, I want to acknowledge the people that, I want to specifically acknowledge Jesse Dobson. Because mm -hmm. um, Jesse um, was a, a true leader in Project Inform with Marty. And we cannot forget um, all the leaders that have passed. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And I think it's, a, and we will continue with, uh, to remember them both. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. And Thank you.